was an ongoing joke here on, on Daytime Toronto that I had no official family doctor. It's true. I was yelling I at now. you for the entire time I've been on this show. And after reading the uh, Toronto Life article from our next guest, uh, columnist and a doctor, uh, I did one of the things that the doctor suggests we do to find a family doctor. I went to the family and said, who do you do? See? Mm -hmm. Columnist and doctor from Toronto Life, we welcome Dr. Vincent Lamb. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Thanks for having me, Marisha. It is think. our yeah. pleasure. Lovely to have you here. Um, Dr. Lamb, I hear the number one complaint from people looking for doctors is that in Toronto, it seems that they are harder to find than diamonds. That's a very common experience, and that's exactly why it's crucial to be looking for a family doctor before you actually get sick. Okay. Once you're actually sick and you really, really need to see a doctor now, not only is there a certain time delay, but you can't necessarily afford that time delay. Okay. Exactly. You know? But you also don't have How to take... How many times did I yell at you? Yeah, you did. And then I went in, while well, I was healthy, and, and, and phoned up, and they said, well, the doctor's not accepting any new patients. Yeah. I said, however, my brother-in-law is one of your patients. Oh, well, in that case, since I'm family... Is that the person, in? That can be one of the ins. Another great in is to inquire at the teaching hospitals because most of the teaching hospitals have a family medicine training program where the family medicine residents run a mini family practice within the scope of their training and you know they are licensed physicians in the course of their training they're also supervised by fully qualified um, physicians who have finished their training so you sort of have the best of both worlds because you have the you know the individualized attention of someone uh, who is a doctor but you also have this sort of higher level of supervision now the great thing if you go that route is that by definition there's new residents every summer mm -hmm. and so by definition they're almost always starting a practice somewhere somewhere yeah so which are the teaching hospitals that people should now keep as a list of places to contact the doctors people uh, can contact college. Toronto East General Hospital, okay. St. Joseph's Hospital, Mount Sinai, St. Michael's Hospital, um, North York General, okay. and um, there's a slightly different way that I think they run in Scarborough and North York, although those are also teaching institutions. So that's but a lot of places all across the city, Doctor. That's right. There's a lot of coverage, and you know, it's a great way to find an in, because if you get associated with a family medicine resident while they're a resident, mm -hmm. well, they're going to finish their training and go start a practice somewhere, mm -hmm. and so they're you may be able to follow them. Right. Absolutely. Uh, you, you work in the Toronto East General. You work in the emergency department. You're an emergency physician. Is That's that correct? Right, yeah. That must be the most demanding, grueling, and sometimes, I guess, thankless job that there is, really, because everybody is at their worst. Everybody's impatient. Everybody wants to be seen, and for goodness sakes, you only have... Uh, one pair of hands. Yeah, but that's where all the good drama comes out of, too. I mean, ER well, is a TV whole show, show named after you. <laughs> what has been your experience? Is it as crazy as the TV shows make it seem? Well, you know, as a doctor, in terms of the experience, it's exactly the tension that, that both of you quite correctly mention. Mm. Uh, there is an absolute aspect of unpredictability, mm -hmm. but if you enjoy and relish that challenge of being, you know, the first on the scene and mm -hmm. the first to, to sort of have a go at the problem, then it's great. Right. So there's no question that it's a specialty which hits you with surprises, uh, and if you if you like being surprised, mm. <laughs> then you're it's never going to be bored at work. I guess <laughs> is what you're trying to say, Doctor Lamb. What about That's people true. that coming to you uh, say say they've done something wrong? We have uh, one of the fellows on the crew, Kevin. He hurt his hand. Sure. Um, now he's coming to you. What should he be prepared? to make your job easier, to make everybody's life a little easier. Uh, you know, he shouldn't really read the article, but give us the shorthand version of what should somebody do to be a good patient. Right. Well, the most important thing um, is that to be a good patient, you have to be able to communicate what exactly has happened and okay. what's wrong and what your concern is. Okay. Now, if you if you have happened to, to cut open your hand and, you know, you're bleeding all over the place, then it's sort of it's obvious. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's not so obvious. You know, maybe you did something to your hand and you're not sure what's wrong. It There's hurts. no blood and guts. Yeah. yeah, it hurts. And so to be able to relate the events and the story that brought you to the emergency department is crucial. And I think, you know, storytelling and narrative is the absolute core skill for both the patient and the doctor. The patient has to be able to say, well, you know, more or less what happened. It doesn't have to be specific. You don't have to say if you hit your hand with a red hammer or a blue hammer. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was a hammer. Was it a, you know, a one-pound hammer or, or a ball-peen hammer? Yeah. Uh, and, and to be able to say more or less when that happened, hours, days, weeks. And to be able to give some sense of the narrative and the events. Where mm -hmm. does it hurt? If you say it hurts here, well... <laughs> you know, that kind of makes it a bit tricky. But if you say it hurts here, that's much more helpful. I, I can't okay. move yeah. his finger or something. You know? The other side's yeah. a doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, what you should look for in, in a doctor 
um, that you can understand, I think, is often a doctor who is a storyteller mm -hmm. and a doctor who's able to say, well, you know, this is what I think is wrong with you. Um, it could also be this, and this is what you can expect. And if you come out of the interaction feeling like you have told a story and received a story in return, yes. I think it's been for Success. the most part pretty successful. I gotta okay. say the folks at yeah. Sunnybrook took good care of me when I uh, smashed into the hockey boards last Friday. I was in there yeah. for a few hours and yeah. the, 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 the staff there were just wonderful. I mean we had yeah. a and we had a bit of fun because I can't stop joking but you know like I thought you I know hey you imagine. gotta make the best of a situation. Yeah they're well, a great crew there. Yeah. What yeah. about issues yeah. of emergency rooms being too full of patients that really shouldn't be in the ER but should be seeing their family doctors? I seem to have sprained my ankle therefore yeah. I want to be seen now. So I, I find that it's less of a problem than um, we sometimes hear it to be. You know, my perspective is this. If something has happened to you and you're scared and you don't really know what's happening mm -hmm. and you're worried, yes. then you should get health care. And, you know, if you can go see your family doctor, then many times all the better. Mm -hmm. um, but there's certain problems that, that really should go to the emergency department. Definitely. Um, and then... There's certain problems that, you know, maybe you could go to see your family doctor. You but if your family doctor is yeah. closed, I think it's perfectly legitimate to go to the emergency department. I think, you know, most of what we do is diagnosis. Mm -hmm. You know, and diagnosis is answering a question. You know, I have to see a hundred kids with a fever to find the one kid with meningitis. Right. Uh, right? right. But those hundred kids have to come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and I think it's a mistake for people to not bring someone in or not bring themselves in if they are scared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If someone's legitimately concerned about a health problem, frankly that's what we're there for. Then they're never wasting your time. Now Just you've written this wonderful, wonderful article in here. You you, you cover all the bases. Um, tell tell us what we can expect and, and, and how much detail went in here. Because I mean you're talking about labor, uh, people with a cancerous <laughs> jawbone, all sorts of different uh, uh, people yeah. in here. How long did it take to research and write this? How long did it take? It took longer than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a marvelous article. But Thank it, you. maybe we're talking about a year's uh, ongoing process or how long? Uh, the article was in development for, I think, about, I think, five or six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we talked about different ways of approaching it. And, and we really decided that the most important thing to do was to give people an insider perspective. And I think That's that good. what people will find when they read this article mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that there are, are things that just make sense. Okay. You know, it's how doctors get paid, okay. um, you know, what doctors need to hear to okay. do a good job. Right. And these are things, when you read it, you say, wow, that's obvious. But hopefully you also read it and say, gee, that's actually really helpful. There you because go. sometimes if you know the inside scoop, it can be a, a big plus. It makes plus. all the difference. Forewarned is forearm. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you. you. For more information, visit www.torontolife.com. Pick up this issue on newsstands right now. It's a compelling read.